made this video already with uh, my um, GoPro kind of camera. It's an uh, active on. Um, and uh, sound quality wasn't very good. So, plus I saw some, a lot of stuff wasn't in the picture. I was trying to get in the picture. So, I'm going to go over this stuff real quick again. Uh, I did put that video up on the on the uh, channel, so feel free to watch it. Uh, it was me cutting in this whole room, so unfortunately, uh, well, I didn't cut the whole thing, and I'm gonna cut some in right now, obviously, because this isn't done right here. But uh, one of the things I'm gonna talk to you guys first about is brushes. Let's look at this here. Let's look at the label from the brush company. What they put on here what they call this brush. This is called a flat sash striper. Turn on the light here. So I'm gonna need that off when I'm painting because I can't see as good. Flat sash striper. Okay, I'm painting walls. Am I painting sash and trim? No. That's this brush right here. Straight sash brush. See it's thin? I don't know if I'm that. Got to do that right away. That's a brand new brush. Kind of beat up. Got in the back of the truck, but you know. anyway, I'll clean that there. Anyway, uh, so that's a flat sash brush. This is an angle sash trim. Am I painting sash again? Guys use angle brushes, paint walls. Okay. It's not the right tool. Another sash trim brush, different side. This has a different angle to it. Again, am I painting sash and trim windows? You know what sash windows are, guys, right? Everybody knows what sash windows are, right? You know the old wooden sash windows? That's what those brushes are made for. Especially those diamond cut sash windows. That's when you need an angle cut brush. That's what they're designed for. That's what they're made for. This right here is dipped too deep right now because I had it set in the paint. I usually don't let my brush get up past about right here. If it's deeper and more paint on it than that, it's it's not really very good. You're not using it right. You shouldn't have any paint on this metal either. I usually clean that off if I get a little bit of paint on there because that's where you should be holding your brush. You shouldn't hold you don't hold your brush way back here. The handle is made for balancing. Okay? It's and it, it's you're supposed to be holding your brush like this. Alright? So when you brush here, the hardest thing to do is brush down an angle. Like that. It's much easier to brush upward. Okay, I got a little bit of scrub on the wall so I can make it look right. Anyway, y'all get the idea there. This is what they call a wall brush. This is a rounded wall brush. It's meant for those painting out of a paint can, which I don't normally do. I usually use one of these here, a deuce, two gallon bucket. Because the reason you use a deuce is because it doesn't tip over as much as easy. You use a smaller bucket, they have less surface area and circumference, and they tip over more often. So that's why our spinners will use a two gallon bucket, at least ones that know what they're doing. Okay, so anyway, while I'm working, I want to talk to you guys a little about painting. Um, one of the things that I found. I'm watching some of these videos of these guys, and I'm just going, oh my goodness, what are they teaching people? You know, they're teaching people the wrong way to paint. You know, these young guys, they don't, they, they're self-taught, they didn't learn anything from the right places. Let's move this camera over, and I'm going to show you guys something here. Pauses. So... A lot of guys got to take off all the hardware when they paint. Well, I figure if you're a good painter, you just don't get paint on hardware. That's just the way it is. You're not supposed to do that. You're not getting paid to paint. 
the hardware so you better not get paint on it that's what my boss used to tell me so you just paint around it and these suckers took 20 minutes each to put on so can you imagine if you wasted all that man hours taking these things off putting them back on because I mean that means you got to take them back off and then put them back on now you just spent all that time when you should be able to be good enough to paint around these now you notice I'm painting right handed and I just switched over to the left hand. Should be ambidextrous. If you're a good painter, you should be able to work paint with both your hands. I told that to my best guy and started working with his other hand, man. He's gotten really good. You know, he's he's gotten really good with his left hand now. See, because one of the things you're gonna find out when you're my age and you've been painting as long as I have, you end up with problems with your shoulders and you know, if you're really producing, you're going to end up with those kind of problems. That's normal. And, uh, you know, you're going to have that happen. So, anyway, you'll be able to learn, learn with both hands because the day that you have to get your shoulder worked on, you're out of work. And uh, you aren't making any money. So, anyway, using the right brush is it is not as big a part of it as it seemed like. I mean, a lot of people say using the right, you have to use the right brush to be able to do something. The honest to God truth is, um, you just got to be good at what you do. That's all there is to it. I can paint with any, I can grab one of these sash tools and I'll be fast with that, but I still won't be near as fast as if I'm using the right brush. You know, that's the difference. It's not. It's not how good you can paint with a different brush, it's how fast you'll be. And that's what makes all the difference. So one guy, maybe he's starting out, he might start out with a two inch, two inch straight eight, straight brush. I always tell him to go straight because if you go with an angle, then it's hard for you to learn how to brush with a straight brush. So I'm not worried about getting paint on those, obviously. Let's see about this light right here. Oh boy, people get freaked out. Oh my, I gotta take down the lights. I'm like, oh, who's paying for that? Why don't you do that on your own time? I, I, I want, you know, and, and the other thing is, you got people, the guy, one guy goes, we need a really stiff brush to paint. It's, you know, there's something called water. If your paint's too thick, you just get a little bit of handful of water and you just drop it down in your paint. You're not watering down your paint. You're just getting it to be more workable. Okay, you just put a little bit of water in it, stir it up, and now your paint's thinner, you can use the same brush. You're not going back to the truck and trying to get a different brush. Oh, yeah, I have a different brush, I can't cut it with this one. It's like, no, you're a painter. You learn how to work with what you've got, and you can become good at it. And that's all there is to it. You know, if you don't make up excuses, don't go out to the truck and go get a brush and take a break, and all that stuff that guys do, making excuses because they can't can't paint you know they don't know what they're doing yet it's all right you know I've got guys to learn you know and stuff like that that's fine you notice I'm using the handle now but typically I'm using the heel you hold the brush you hold it with the metal around the metal part that's the way you get the balance yeah there you go all the way around that light. Got behind it too. And around these things here. Oh, got a little spot I missed. Every once in a while you get a little paint on that. That's what there's your rag you carry your wet rag for. That's to clean off everything. Anyway, the the other thing is, so you're always working your tips of your brush. You never dip your brush all the way in deep into the paint where it goes all the way up to here. Your brush should never be wet up to here. It should always be about right the tips only. So if you're dipping your brush all the way down deep into your paint, what happens is it splays. It splays like this, and then you got it doesn't put on a straight edge, and it doesn't cover as good when you go to use it. So there's a few things like that to know. Check that out. A little bit of paint on there. Wipe that right off. It's my house, so I can do whatever I want, but I need to take all this stuff down. 
Let's take a look down here, cutting in down here. This is the hard part, guys. This is the hardest part there is. And I'm cutting, I got the camera right here in my way, so I have to reach around it. This is the hardest part. The guys say, oh, no cutting down. These are no. Because <laughs> the paint wants to run down, so you have to keep your brush just right and dry enough to where it doesn't want to run down. And then you just paint a straight line. You just pull the brush. And no, you don't have to hold your breath. I don't want the guy telling you that. You learn, you learn how to breathe while you're working because you, you're working, so you better breathe. You can't hold your breath all the time. You don't need a stiff brush. The thing is, what you do need is a, is an, is a light hand. It, what guys do, this is where the biggest mistake in brushing is, is they take their brush and they push it too hard on the surface like that. And then they pull it, try and get a straight line. See how jaggy that is? It's all about, look, light, lighter. Watch my tips like this. Let me do a straight line over here where you can see. Lighter. Lighter makes a straighter line. Harder makes a crooked line. And that's the biggest, because people don't have a steady hand, so they're pushing on the brush too much. So, and they're trying to push the paint out of the brush. Let the brush release the paint. That's the job of the brush. It releases paint onto the wall. Transferring paint from the brush to the wall. That's what a brush does. And, and guys, and the other thing people do is that makes a big mistake, and I'm talking about real amateurs, so if you're a homeowner, you're trying to learn how to paint, maybe paint your house, paint your bathroom. Um, you guys, what you want to, what, what, well, I was saying, I can't have lost my train of thought. Bear with me. Breathing too much paint. So, anyway, here's your corners. People, they say you got to do it all this way. Let's see. Here. You got to do everything this way. But you go like this, too. So that gives you that nice feathered edge. Then you don't need to use a roller. I watched a guy using rollers to do his cutting. I was like, man, where'd you learn that? If the people that I worked with years ago, my old bosses were still alive, they'd roll over in their grave. They'd roll it. Just seeing you do that stuff, I just, it's funny. So... Anyway, there's a way to do it. There is a way to not do it. I've been watching the way not to do it. I'm going to try and do some more videos on show you how the right way to do it is. Maybe somebody will watch them someday that wants to learn the right way. But uh, everybody always thinks they know better. They want to watch the guy in a nice suit, uniform, show his face, do all that stuff. I don't do that. Let's take a look down in the corner here. So nice light tips, light, not pushing way on it, just real light, and just pull it. Light, pull it. Keep it straight. Get that straight line, just go. That's, a, that's the way you learn how to do it the right way. Some of you guys have been doing it a long time, I'm showing you, you guys who've been doing it a while, that's okay. This is your chance to learn to do it, baby, how to be better and faster. Oh, um, you're not gonna, if you know everything already, you're not gonna learn anything. You think you know everything? There's nothing left to learn. You're done. You will never learn. You'll be the slowest painter forever. You wanna be faster? You wanna be better? Watch the video. I'll show you. Show you how to do it faster and better, both. Alrighty. Bump the furniture. Wasn't looking. Oh, you gotta cover all that stuff. Cover everything. Everything's covered up. How much material are you wasting doing that? How much more stuff are you putting on the earth? It doesn't need to be there. Learn how to do your job right. Carry wet rag with you when you mess up. Pick it up, clean it. It's over. 
All right, guys. That's enough for painting school. I got to get this bathroom done. I'm going to do a whole thing with the Slim Jim weenie roller, some guys call them. Do it all with the Slim Jim because there's only 8, 10, 12 square foot of wall in here. There's no sense in getting a big roller out, but normally I'll use a 9 inch roller to paint a bathroom or kitchen. That's really what you should be using. The Slim Jim roller um, holds less paint. The other thing it does is it doesn't cover as good as a 9 inch roller. I mean, I'll just, just let me tell you why real quick. Let's go over that real quick. Why does a Slim Jim roller not hold as much? Well, of course we know it doesn't hold as much paint. Okay. If you're a skateboarder, if you've got a smaller wheel, does that skateboard go faster or slower than one with a big wheel? Downhill skateboards have big wheels, just so you know. So, why would they put bigger wheels on a downhill skateboard? Because there's less resistance. So if there's less resistance, then when you release your paint onto the wall, there's less resistance in your paint being pulled back off by your roller. These things don't cover as good as a nine inch roller. Okay, so that's a little other little quick trick. I'll talk about rolling in another video. Um, but uh, I'll get this bathroom done, cut it all in, and uh, make my wife happy. Okay, we'll talk to you in the next video.